futures and options on futures trading involve substantial risk and is not a suitable investment for all types of investors. Past results are not necessarily indicative of future results. When I use the word I in this video, it refers to what I teach in my charting course or what I author in my twice daily oral and written updates. Prices shown on charts and quote boards are in real time and take into account all known activity up to this point in time. And if you'd like to read more of this disclaimer, simply hit the pause key on your video player. Good afternoon. Ira Epstein of Linen Associates with your agriculture update for this Monday, the 26th of March, 2018. Boy, what a day. Look at the volatility that you have today. Look at the stock market come back, but not so in the grains, but it was pretty volatile. I mean, I consider a 12 cent range in wheat pretty volatile, 15 cents in beans to be that way as well, and the corn seven cents, those are not small range days. And I think that's what we all have to get used to. Volatility has come back into the markets, and volatility doesn't mean trend changes, it means volatility. We saw a bit of a break in the energy markets as well as finally natural gas caught a bit of a bid. It's been so long in that market. In the soybeans, when we go to the weekly area chart of closes, you've gone from 1060 now down to today's low close of 1025 and a half for roughly a 35 cent pullback in the market. Now we know the Argentine situation, it is still prominent in the market. Our weather uh, forecasts have come out and the, the research over the weekend, and it shows that the rains that hit did not hit the key areas of the soybeans. The problem is, what's the crop size? And that's what we're all going to be looking for. We also get this week, at the end of the week, some reports of stocks on crops, planning intentions. We get a lot of data this week. So the grain market settling back a little bit as the market gets ready for these different reports. And we get our first look at the intentions of U.S. farmers on the upcoming planting season. Isn't that crazy? The planting season. And you look at the fields and there's still some snow in them. As we see the daily area chart, you're on a down thrust. You've dropped roughly 55 uh, cents in that market from the peak high to that low close. Had a small bounce and coming back down right now. And you get to see this action on this chart. And if you look at that chart, you see that you've got a pattern of a lower low and now you've got a higher high. So the rally up today was enough to stop this big breakdown where the market had a constant pattern of lower highs and lower lows. It didn't quite make it up to the resistance point. We saw the support on Friday. It hit the 100-day average and bounced away. But as long as the bias stays down, the market's on the defensive. It also hit on Friday the lower Bollinger Band. So again, that theory, when these two numbers come together and you make a run at it, often, the word is not always, but often, you'll see the market get a bit of a reversal from that. In the slow stochastics, the momentum is oversold. So what we've got is a market that peaked out near the 1080s, came all the way back down about 80 cents if you look at that whole move. And now the question is, what are we going to see as we go forward on the uh, crop reports? That's how I'm looking at it. In the meal market, we finally had the move up. Now, if we take a look and you go to Friday, if I can get this to come back, there we go. You got up on Friday to the 18-day average of closes, had a small follow-through today. When I say small, you got from that close up uh, at one point. We closed at 377.90. We got to 385.80, and then the market just fell apart on you. So the market's refusing to stay up and over that 18-day average as you're correcting an oversold condition. That would be the way that I look at the market. In the oil market, non-trend. Higher high, lower low, lower Bollinger Band, oversold condition. A difficult market to trade because it's basically the tail of the dog. Whichever way the beans and the meals go, you're whipping the oil. It's not the primary market right here. In the corn market, while we ended this big break that we had by the market coming from way up here into the 395 area down to 368, you're unable to hold the rally very long and you're staying just oversold. In the wheat market, you have a pattern of higher lows, higher highs, but you're staying embedded. This market's failing here. You could be making another run to the lower Bollinger Band if you keep the embedded reading. What will end that? Getting the red line to close over 20. You embed when both numbers stay under 20 for several days in a row. It's often accompanied by lower prices. And as you can see, what the market is doing. It's just staying with that. So you've got your embedded reading. We'll see if it loses that or if it keeps it going into weekend. 
in the sugar market we got up just high enough over this previous high on Friday to knock out the trend and then we fell back down so if you come here and you look I believe it was right here at 1291 let's see what we got up to 1286 actually I've got my numbers wrong when I'm looking at it I should have lower highs and lower lows a downtrend this arrow right here I put it on about 20 minutes ago before I did this actually is pointing lower remember what I told you, you always got to look at those numbers to be sure of the visual you're still in a downtrend but oversold the rally failed to take out the 18 day average of closes at 1290 when I come to the coffee market, maybe we get a bounce from an oversold condition, but the trend is clearly one of lower highs, lower and lows. The trend is still down, but you get that oversold area and you're always get nervous about things like that. In the cocoa market, remember I mentioned that the weather situation in the cocoa regions is having a problem. And you can see this as this market's trying to convert itself from being overbought back to embedding. Now, we had lost the embedded reading right back here, right there. So when it got back under 80, the market had a break, but it never did hit the 18-day average. Then it started coming back up, and you can see this is Wednesday. On Thursday, we had both numbers get over 80. On Friday, they stayed that way, and today, you've got your third day in a row. So until this market loses that embedded reading, it's again converted itself into what I'll call a full-blown bull situation until that is done. Support back at 2487, potential resistance 2669. I say that's the strongest indicator you've got on that. In the cotton market, you are oversold. The market's got a pattern of lower highs. It had lower lows. It's trying to figure out right now, should it take out that 8139, 80, I'm sorry, and make a run to the lower Bollinger Band with an oversold condition. In the cattle, we had bearish cattle on feed report on Friday. You're down today another 90 points, and you're paying attention to the lower Bollinger Band. You're running literally right on that number. But as we closed, we closed under that number today. So you're a little ahead of yourself. But again, the embedded slow stochastic rules the day when you get one of those. Feeders, the same thing. You've got that, and you've got the pattern of lower highs, lower and lows now. And in the hogs, a small bounce. And what the hogs are obviously worried about, and today what caused uh, at times a little rally, maybe, just maybe, we won't uh, have the full-blown trade war with China. But I'll tell you. Negotiations don't mean just because Steve Mnuchin said on Sunday, he said something that nobody paid attention to. It's called the pathway. You can step off the path. Sometimes you threaten a trade war, you don't actually get them. Other times you get them as you step there. We're seeing China listen to the world, basically. It's, it's obviously the U.S. leading the parade, but you got to stop dumping some of these products, intellectual property rights. But that's only part of the list that Trump has proposed to them. Let's see the rest of it and how it impacts the farmers. Pivot points. You get markets this volatile. One of the tools that I recommend the traders learn to work with are a popular tool called a pivot point. Now, what it is, you're going to take a pivot point. I've put together the videos to teach you that. It's a two-part video series. And yes, I'm doing the third video. I promised to do it uh, at the end of last year. I didn't get to it. Now I'm moving my studio part of it uh, into an office where I can do that. But what you get is a center line. It's called the pivot. And then you get resistance points above it and support points below it. While I'm showing two resistance, two support, you could have more. Foreign traders, foreign exchange traders often use more than uh, two of them. But the concept here is that you're trying to get involved at one point to try to get out at others. So it's sort of contra trend trading. And in markets that move all over the board, sometimes that's a way to look at things. So I've got two videos, one where I explain the basics, the other I show you the examples and how to set them up on your charts and the like. Call my staff. You can go to our website. You'll see an offering for pivot points. Click up here or underneath us in many ways websites. It says click here for Iris free offers. I'm Ira Epstein. You have a good day and I'll talk to you tomorrow.